Hey up everyone, Rich here at OnlyVans. On this week's video, we're gonna take you through the top eight most common mistakes that are made by uh, us fellow caravanners. I uh, hope you enjoy. So as you can see, I'm back from my fishing trip. Um, so it's me at the reins, uh, unfortunately. Now I appreciate that Lisa's a, a lot more glamorous uh, than myself so uh, thank you very much Elisa for, for taking over last week and the reason why you're watching this video is probably because you're interested in caravanning camping or motorhoming and you're probably thinking what can you do to get access to more videos like this so if you go down and hit the subscribe button below and hit the bell notification and you can get on top of all, all of our most recent videos like I said we're going to go through the top eight most common mistakes made by caravanners um, now, what I want every single one of you to do is in the comments section below, is I want you to come down and put down exactly what is the biggest mistake that you've ever made whilst you've been out caravanning, camping, motorhoming. What's the biggest mistake you've ever made? Uh, and, you know, we're, we look to come back to every single comment that's down there. So make sure it's a good one. Number one on the list is not making a list or planning what it is that you need. Uh, for when you go away and it's leaving stuff behind um, you know especially if you've relatively new and it's the first few times you've been out in your caravan the last thing that you want to be doing is leaving really important stuff behind you know I know people that have left the clothes behind people that have left barbecues behind and stuff like that so what I've done in the description below of the video I've put a link in there so if you go and register put your address in there then you can get access to a free pre-travel caravan checklist Get yourself on there, it slips in your glove compartment and anytime you go away you can make sure that you don't make many of the mistakes that we're going to go through now. So number one is make sure you make a list of everything that it is that you need to make sure you've got everything. Now number two is one that seems to be getting more and more of a common thing that we've started to see really and I think a lot of the time that's because you know, since the pandemic the, you know, the, the staycation has got more and more and more popular with people but i see so many people um at the moment that are driving around and they've left the roof light up um or they haven't brought down the aerial or the satellite dish or anything like that you know if you're traveling on motorways and stuff like that you know you can do some real bad damage to the caravan now this is one that we're guilty of you know, I have a nightmare, especially when we have a shower in the bathroom and we lift the, the skylight open to let the steam out uh, and then we'll go to work in the morning and then we'll forget that it's up and it's rained in the day and we come back and there's a puddle of water on the floor. So it's a dead, dead common one, but make sure you're always bringing it down and shutting your roof lights and bringing your aerials down and clipping your doors back and making sure that your TVs are off the wall and all that sort of stuff. So make sure before you travel, just do one last walk around to make sure all those sorts of things are all done ready for transit travel. Number two on our list is um, not leaving your gas on or leaving your electric hob on. I'll put a uh, link on for a video that we did because one of us two, not me, uh, did exactly that. So we left the electric hob on with the kettle on um, and the campsite had to ring us to say your caravan's making a funny noise and that was because it was you know, nearly melted, uh, melted the kettle. So once again, it's just part of those little checks that you should be doing really, is just making sure that your gas is off, it's disconnected, it's turned off, make sure your electric hob's off. Um, stuff like that's really, really, really important. Number three, I suppose preparing this video for me really was was probably the easiest one out of all the videos that we've had to do because I can see myself in so many of them. Um, so the next thing, number three, is making sure that you put petrol in your car the night before you leave. So I was always a nightmare for this in my trailer tent. I always think, oh, I'll do it in the morning or, I'll, uh, you know, and by the time you do it, you're on the motorway and, you know, it's about 19 pound a litre for diesel. Um, so it's just little bits and pieces like that. Just make sure that everything is ready to go the night before because what you don't want to be doing is rushing about in the morning when you're due to leave, especially if you're up leaving early doors, going somewhere like Newquay or something like that, which is miles away. The last thing that you want to be doing is rushing about because that's when basically that's when people make mistakes. That's when people uh, forget stuff. Um, so, you know, really big one. Uh, although it sounds dead, dead trivial, just make sure you're filling your car up the night before and trying to get your caravan through a service station or through a petrol station must be absolutely horrendous next on the list is make sure you don't leave yourself without 
gas. Make sure you've got a pretty good idea and a pretty good indication as to how much gas that you've got. So I have two six kilo gas bottles so that I know that once one goes, I've always got another full one. And I always make sure that I've got a full one in reserve, but you know, it's really difficult to get hold of you know, gas cans at the moment. So if you have got one, just make sure you've got a pretty good idea as to where your gas is at. Because the last thing that you'd want to be doing is you know getting halfway through your holiday and then finding out that your gas has run out and then struggling to get hold of some and having to spend half a, half a day of your holiday driving around trying to get uh, some fresh gas and stuff like that. So um, yeah, always keep on top of your gas. Next on the list, before I got my uh, caravan, I used to have a, a trailer tent and I absolutely loved it. And um, I had a bit of a, a, an incident uh, traveling south on the M5 uh, and since then, I never really enjoyed towing. You know, I used to get like, quite bad anxiety, sort of like a few days before, uh, and, and all that sort of stuff. So, you know, my stepdad has had an, an incident before as well, where he's, you know, he's just not connected. He's not hitched the caravan up properly. You know, this is so, so, so important. Um, you know, because like I say, there's you know, as scary as it sounds. You know, there's. There is lives at risk, really, especially if it comes off on a, on a motorway or something like that. You know, once you've, once you can hear the, hear the hitch lock click. You know, I used to sort of, you know, quite, you know, shake it quite a lot, really, just to make sure that it was connected. And also, as well, for your brake cable. You know, I was always guilty of, you know, wrapping it around my um, tow bar. Um, but you know, it sort of defeats the object of having your brake cable if your tow bar falls off. So that's actually not supposed to be connected to your tow bar. It's supposed to be connected to uh, something separate and something you know on the back of your car. It's normally a little plate to the side of the the tow bar. But you know, having a bit of an incident, you know, it sort of scarred me a little bit really. So it was one of the main factors as to why I put my caravan uh, on a seasonal pitch. You know. Just make sure you absolutely 100%. And if, if there's any doubt, then there's no doubt. Undo it and do it again. And just make sure you get it absolutely bang on. Next on the list. Now, it sort of seems like we did the the more trivial ones at the beginning, really. And we started getting onto the serious ones. But, you know, a, a, another real serious one is just make sure you distribute your weight properly in the caravan. I think we've all seen people before on the motorways with the the caravan snaking and all that sort of stuff and that would terrify me not only driving it but it would also terrify me if i was following it you know i'd have to be two I'd have to be two lanes across um so what they always say is is that you need to make sure that you distribute the really heavy stuff across your axle because you don't want to have too much stuff on the front of the caravan because what you do is you put too much weight on your tow bar and then if you put the weight at the back then it makes it snake quite violently so what you want to be doing is you want to be distributing all of the real heavy stuff across your axles whether it's a single whether it's a double and we're putting it all across there it just means that it's far more stable and you know same again for putting stuff in you know your, your cupboards up here you don't want to be putting heavy stuff up there because you don't want it to be top heavy so just always make sure you're planning where you're going to put you know put all your, your heavy things all your heavy bits and pieces next one is is to plan your route when you're driving um, especially with some of these eight foot caravans now that are eight foot wide and you know our elegance is is really really long um now i spent a lot of time at, at dawlish warren uh, when i used to tour i used to spend loads of time down at dawlish warren at cofton if you've never been there you know as far as i'm concerned it's the best campsite in devon um you know the fishing there is absolutely incredible um but once you you know when it's a travel from stoke 189 miles 150 of that was on the m5 but it was just 10 miles at the very end where you got off the m5 at junction 30 uh, and it's it's just a bit windy and i say my trailer tent wasn't particularly very long but you know for for and that was the easier route there's actually a, a shorter route that you can take which is you know it's like a single a single lane the whole way you can get sat navs and stuff like that now which can plan your routes for you especially if you've got big caravans or camper vans you know so just make sure you don't find yourself becoming a bit of a cropper 
uh, and, and finding yourself you know down a one-way track with a, a tight bridge or a low bridge and then you you, you really have you know you're up, you're up the creek then with with no paddles so i thought i'd uh, i mentioned it earlier on so i thought i'd tell you about my uh, incident on the m5 and what sort of shook me up a little bit really no one was hurt you know it was relatively easily solved but i was traveling down the m5 with my trailer tent and the front rail had cracked and as I was driving down the M5, the sort of the wind had got under the the, the waterproof cover, uh, and then the front part of the cover sort of came off my trailer tent and inflated like a massive, like a great big parachute. And my car I was driving about 60 mile an hour, um, you know, so my car sort of jerked back, and it was only me and my daughter in the car at the time, uh, and I had to sort of get into the, you know, I had lorries behind and all that sort of stuff, so I had to sort of get into the. The, the hard shoulder as quickly as possible really I have to try and pull me me, me weather me weather thing out of the sort of hard shoulder uh, and sort of towing wise I, I, I'm never the same I never ever 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 I'm not I don't think anyone particularly enjoys towing but you know I constantly like the, like two three days before I was leaving holiday you know I was getting quite anxious thinking oh my goodness you know what happens if uh, you know anything anything could happen really so it, it shut me up a bit really um and like i said it wasn't what was an accident no one was hurt nothing you know a couple hundred quid to get the the trailer tent fixed and all that sort of stuff but it just gets your sort of mind going thinking oh you know you know what what would happen if it had come off completely and it had gone over landed on a windscreen of a lorry and you know and a lot of the time it's not if anything happens to you it's if anything was to happen to, to anybody else really so sort of tainted the whole sort of trailer tent experience for me really really put me off uh put me off towing massively well there you go everyone i hope you've enjoyed the video um i suppose for the next video if you'd like me to do it or if you'd like lisa to do it pop lisa in the comment section below just put lisa's name um because i don't know about you i'd love to see her in front of the the camera again so let us know about that and um, for those of you that haven't and come this far please subscribe you know we do at least one video every single week um I hope it's valuable. We hope you enjoy it. Um, apart from that, uh, hope you have a great week. Um, goodbye. Hey up, everyone. It's Rich here at Only Vans. On this this week's video, we're. really especially if it comes off on a, on a motorway or something like that <coughs> <coughs>